we get a nice snug fit there i'd have to try real hard to pull this out of there so it's nice and snug in there not going anywhere What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Sunday, April 23rd here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna get a trellis set up for our indeterminate tomatoes in this plot right here beside me. And then we're gonna finally get our peppers in the ground in a plot right over there. So in this plot, we've got three beautiful rows of taters over there. We've got two rows of determinate tomatoes right here. And just a couple videos ago, I showed you how we run the first line of string for our Florida weave trellis on those. And then right over here, we have two rows of indeterminate tomatoes, about 12 different varieties here. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up this kind of trellis. So we use the Florida weave trellis for those determinate tomato varieties because they only get about four or five foot tall. But we use this taller kind of hanging string trellis for our indeterminate tomatoes. Started doing this last year, really liked it. So we're doing it again this year. Now I realize a lot of you have been doing this type of trellis for a long time and you've seen this before. There's a lot of people who haven't. In fact, I've never seen this kind of setup anywhere around here. You ride around here and look at backyard gardens, everybody's doing the florida weave that's probably got a lot to do with the fact that they're all growing determinate tomatoes but if you want to grow some indeterminate tomatoes some taller ones some of these heirloom varieties this is a great way to do it so we've already got one of these hanging trellis setups done for one of our indeterminate rows now i'm about to walk you through putting it together on this second row here first let's start with our supply list so you're going to need some t-posts I would recommend some pretty tall T-posts for this. We use five foot T-posts over there for the Florida weave because we don't need them to be very tall for those plants. Over here, I'm using seven foot tall T-posts. You can get your hands on some eight foot tall T-posts. That might work even better. Then we've got some conduit here that I've already laid out along the row. Now I'm using 10 foot long pieces of conduit. And if you're going to do that, it works better. If your row length is a multiple of 10, these rows are 30 foot long. So it works out perfectly to have three 10 foot pieces of conduit and I don't have to cut it. Then over here on the back of the buggy, we've got these set screw conduit couplings, three quarter inch. These are really easy to install with a Phillips screwdriver. I went ahead and bought a whole box of these last year when I was doing this setup because I knew I'd probably use them over time. We've got some inch and a quarter tees there, PVC tees, and then we've also got some inch and a quarter PVC elbows. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and lay your conduit out along the row where your tomatoes are going to go. Lay it out as straight as possible, but the ends of the pieces as close together as possible. And that's going to tell you where you need to put your T-posts. So wherever you have two pieces of conduit that are going to be joined together, that's where you'll need a post. Now when you're setting your T-post on the end, you want to set them on the inside of that conduit a little bit, like you see there. That's going to allow you to pull back that T-post a little bit, get everything nice and snug along that stretch there. And one more little tip here, if you can rig it so that your conduit pieces join together between two tomato plants, as opposed to right on top or right beside a tomato plant, that's going to work a lot better. So you can drive your post between those two plants there. Works out really well for us because we have a drip emitter there. Makes that soil nice and soft. Makes it a lot easier to drive these posts. So that tells you how we got to where we are now. We laid out the conduit, figured out where our posts are going to need to go, and then drove them into the ground with the T-post driver. Now we need to put one of these elbows on top of this end T-post. Now we're going to go ahead and put a PVC T on top of that post. Get our piece of conduit here, stick it into that elbow on the end, and then run it through that T there. Now we need to go ahead and add our connector here onto the end of this piece of conduit. And then we'll pick up our next piece. We'll insert it into the T on the next post there. Insert it into this coupling and tighten that baby down. Then we need to add one more coupling here. So we can join these two pieces together. Take our last piece of conduit, stick it into that elbow there, stick it into 
that coupling, tighten it down, and we're good to go. Now ideally you want to use all the same height T-posts when you do this, but I was one seven foot T-post short from having eight of them. And so that's why you see it kind of leaning down here a little bit. I think this is maybe a six and a half foot tall T-post. It's just a little bit shorter than the rest of those. It looks a little wonky, but it will work just fine. And when we set our T-posts inside our conduit a little bit, like I showed you earlier, we get a nice snug fit there. I'd have to try real hard to pull this out of there. So it's nice and snug in there, not going anywhere. Now the great thing about a setup like this is all the pieces are reusable from year to year. So once you invest in a setup like this, it's just plug and play. Put it together and you're ready to go. And in a few weeks when these plants get a little larger, we'll hang a piece of string from that conduit there run it down to each tomato plant, use some tomato clips to attach it to the string, and that will keep everything upright. Now these plants haven't popped like these determinate plants over here. One, because these determinants were planted first. Secondly, because we haven't healed these plants here like we did those determinants. So I think now that we have our trellis set up, it'd be a great time to heal these plants. So just like we did with those determinate plants a couple weeks ago, we're gonna pull some soil up around these plants here. We'll suppress any in row weeds that we're getting. And we'll also get a lot of that nice nutritious soil up around that plant there. All right, so we got those babies healed up nicely there and that should make them pop here in the next few days. Now before we go plant some peppers, I should mention you'll see lots of different variations of this type of trellis online. Some a lot more complicated than others. Now the way we'll be doing it is pretty simple because by the time these indeterminate tomato plants reach the top of those T-posts or the top of that conduit line there, our indeterminate tomato season is gonna be pretty much over down here. Now, if you live somewhere and have a longer tomato growing season, then you might need to make some adaptations to this system here. Like I said, a lot of good information online as far as how to do that. But the reason we kind of keep it simple here is because these plants are gonna to be toast in mid to late July anyways. Now over here in this plot, we've got some beautiful pepper plants that we need to get in the ground. So this is another one of our no-till plots, just like that plot where those tomatoes were earlier. We had a cool season cover crop on this plot throughout the winter months. We let the chickens graze it. It was still a good bit of grain out here. I was gonna get a load of those composted wood chips and put on top of here. Wasn't able to get a load of those, so we had to terminate the cover crop with a wheel hoe. It wasn't easy, but we got it done. That's why you see so much organic matter out there right now that's from just flipping the rest of that cover crop with the wheel hoe a little bit there's a few little green sprigs left out there that's not worrying me a whole lot i do like the fact that we've got a lot of organic matter here this plot almost drains too well having some of that debris in there should help it hold its moisture a little bit better got some fungal activity going on in this plot which is always a good thing to see that's kind of our goal with these no-till plots so i came in here earlier put a drip system in place got three rows laid out i don't know how far apart these rows are i didn't measure them just eyeballed it but they're far enough apart and this is where we're going to be putting our peppers these pepper plants probably could have went in the ground a couple weeks ago, but I just had other things I needed to prioritize. Peppers take the heat just fine, so we don't have to be in a huge hurry to get those in the ground around here. Got a pretty nice root ball on those, not wrapping yet, so these plants should take off pretty well once we put them in the soil. So we'll go through the varieties we're gonna be planting real quick here. For my planting map, we got King Arthur bell pepper, probably put in a few plants of those. We've got a Serrano variety called Altiplano or Altiplano, not sure how you pronounce that. I prefer Serranos over jalapenos. That's why we're growing Serranos and not growing any jalapenos. We've got a Pueblo chili variety called Mirasol grew something similar to that last year. Really liked it growing that again this year. We've got a long, hot cayenne called Massilia. 
excited about that one then i'm doing a whole row of santa fe grand peppers which is one of my favorite peppers we want to plant a lot of those because we use those to make a lot of hot sauces and stuff and then i'm doing a whole row of really really hot peppers which are going to include chocolate ghost and chocolate habanero so why are we growing so many chocolate peppers? Well, I'm growing a lot of them for my buddy Mark over in the big city of Cairo, Georgia, who makes all these delicious infusions with hot peppers. So these are kind of his two signature items here. This chocolate habanero infused tartar sauce and the cocktail sauce, really, really good stuff here. And then you just launched this one right here, a scotch bonnet infused vinegar, which is really good. Too. so you can go check all these out at hottarsauces.com and you can use the code lazy dog farm to get 10 percent off so anyway we're growing a lot of peppers for mark so he can continue to make a lot of these delicious sauces and experiment with new things he can make with those peppers all right so we got all our plants laid out there we'll space these just like we did our tomato plants we're using a drip tape with a 12 inch emitter spacing so we'll put a plant by every other emitter now over here on this third row i didn't quite have enough chocolate having every plants to make it to the end of the row but i've got a few late bloomers in the greenhouse i think i can use to finish out that row now with peppers you can plant them deep like you would with tomatoes but you don't have to we won't plant ours very deep here. We're going to put a little handful of Nature Safe 855 down there and just get that little puppy in the ground. Just get that root ball beside that drip tape emitter, which should be good to go. And we'll get all the rest of these planted. All right, all right, all right. Almost three full rows of peppers in the ground there. I know that's a lot of pepper plants, but they're fun to grow. They're easy to grow, and so we like to grow a lot of them. You'll notice, just like we did with those determinate tomatoes, I didn't cover up my drip tape between plants because we're going to need to put some T-posts in some of those spots as we run our Florida weave trellis once these things get up and going. And then we've still got this other half of the plot where we can plant something else. I know I'm going to do a second planting of summer squash right here, but that's probably not going to occupy this entire space. So not sure what I'm going to put here yet, but it's nice to have some options. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out Mark's website, Hot Tar Sauces. Dot com and if you want to see that indeterminate tomato trellis in action with tomato plants all the way up to the top of that conduit there be sure to check out this video right here when we did last year showing a bunch of different varieties growing on that type of trellis so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm